Hi, I'm Jeff, and this is a hedgehog I modeled in Tinkercad, a free 3D modeling software. Why? Because there's a teacher named Rachel who watches my videos and asked her students at Willie Eastlake School of Innovation what they wanted to see modeled. And this was the first thing on their list, a hedgehog. Now in my last video, I made this lobster using the shape generator shape, shape generator shape, to make all these complex organic shapes. But in this one, I'm gonna keep it a little more simple. I'm only gonna be using these shapes. And since so many schools are going virtual this year, if you're a teacher or a student and you wanna see something specific modeled in Tinkercad, just email me your ideas here and I'll be sure to put it on my list of things to make. What are you doing? You already have a long list of things to make from the kids at Willoughby East Lake School of Inter I will be sure to put it on the list of things to make. This guy. So without further ado, I present to you, Rachel the Hedgehog. As always, the first thing I'm gonna do when I model something is to find reference images to get an accurate shape to aim for. And I'm seeing mostly a sphere. But I like this shape the best. So I'm gonna go ahead and see what I can do. And throughout this process, I'm gonna refer back to the image a couple times to make sure I get the right shape. I like this, so I'm gonna align it, group it, and then move on to the face. Now this nose, it kind of has a curve to each side and then a top curve. I see three curves, side, side, and then top. So let's work on that. And this brings me to my first trick that I like to use. If you tilt an object and then scale it in one direction, it kind of skews the whole shape. And what's great about this shape is that it has a variable slope, which means I can play around with more or less slope as I see fit. So let's just see what happens. That looks good to me, so I'll mirror it and move it over. But as you can see, it's difficult to know that you're taking off the same amount on both sides, so we're gonna use the ruler. Place the ruler near the midpoint of the blue body. And first we wanna make sure that we're using the midpoint for the origin measurement. So click this button and it will show you the distance between the origin and the midpoint of anybody you select. If your blue body is off by one or two, then just change the measurement to zero, and then you know that its midpoint is aligned with the origin. So then when you click on this object that we're cutting out, we'll just change this to a whole number. Then once we click on the other object, we'll make it the opposite value. So first was negative 28, this one will be 28. And now we know that they're perfectly spaced. And now I'm gonna work on the top of the face, which has a slight slope to it. I like it, so before it goes away, I'm gonna duplicate it and then use it for the bottom. Again, we'll check our reference images and see what the bottom looks like. And it's, it's kind of got a sharp drop off to it, so that shape we have is gonna work really nice. And again, there's, there's a sharp drop off. I like that, so let's move on to the quill. And when I look at this, I see two slopes. I see a gradual slope for the, for the main part and then a sharp slope at the end. Yeah, all of them have these two slopes, a, a gradual one and then a sharp at the top. So let's make that with the cone. And we're gonna use two cones, but the first one we'll make real small and just stretch it until we see a good gradual increase. And I think that's right. So we'll put a smaller cone on top and guess at the base diameter. And we know it'll be smaller than one, so let's just do 0.5 see how it looks and we'll play around with it from the oh oh it it looks dead on 
Okay, you may not get this lucky, so let me show you what to do if yours is off. First, you'll align them to see how close they are. And then adjust the two dimensions and align them again until it looks like a flush joint, like, like one shape. I like this, but I want to check the proportion of the quill to the head. Because proportions are everything in making something look like the actual thing. And I think when I put it up here, it looks about the same. And I know I made it a lot longer than it needs to be, but that's going to help us later and you'll see why. So we'll go ahead and duplicate these, but as you can see, it just doesn't look like actual quills because it's too organized. So we're just gonna hit the randomize button and what that does is it'll automatic, no. No, there's no, there's no randomize button. I, I wish it were that easy, but it's not. So we're just going to grab little groups and rotate and move them around until we're happy. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm looking for patterns. I'm looking for the same ones that look like they're aligned and I'll select those and then play with those. And once I have this in a good spot, I'm gonna flip it upside down and then group all the circles, the bases together. So it's a nice little cluster. Once I do this, I'm gonna flip it back and see if it kind of makes sense up top. And if it doesn't, I'll fix the ones that don't and I'll add some in or take some away if they just look better. I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna group all of these, and it doesn't matter if they intersect, they'll just be grouped into one big bunch. Delete the other one, and we're gonna start moving it around. And again, they're a lot longer than they need to be, but that allows us to play around with different angles. Let's go back and check to see the angle of the quill. Kind of all follow a backwards trend, so we'll try that first. And then I'm just gonna duplicate them and position them until they look right. I do need to check the side to see kind of what, what profile it follows as it moves back. And there's a bit of a curve to it, so we'll put that in. And remember, if you don't deselect it after you duplicate and move something, it follows the exact same spacing as the last one. So duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. So that helps a lot sometimes. I don't really like how sparse the grouping is of these quills up front, so I'm gonna duplicate them, rotate them, and make them a little more dense. And I'm gonna go ahead and grab one and make the new grouping just as dense so I don't have to keep on doing this. So let's move this out, duplicate it, rotate it, and then group it all together.
Now, sometimes what I like to do to get rid of the repeated pattern look is to take one group out, rotate it a couple times, and then put it back in. And that helps achieve a more organic look. Okay, I've got to say this. There's no fast or easy way to do this part. It's duplicating, moving, and then rotating the model to see if it looks right over and over and over again. This is one of the non-glamorous parts of 3D modeling that is sometimes required. And I'd skip it if I could which I'm gonna give you the option to do. I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up, but if you don't want to watch even that, skip ahead to here. Now, if you notice, I'm only doing half of this because once half is done, I plan to duplicate that whole group of quills and then mirror it and then combine it and then we're done. My papa always used to say, work smarter, not harder. I'm happy with the way that looks. So we'll select it all, group it, and it's probably gonna take a little bit of time since this is hundreds of bodies we're grouping, and I actually wouldn't be surprised if Tinkercad crashed. Oh, okay, yeah, awesome. So I tried multiple times to group all of this, but it didn't work, so I ended up starting all over and tried to minimize the amount of quills. And I think it looks pretty much the same. So since the quills are done, I'm gonna move on to the face, and I'll start with the eyes. I just need to check the position and size on the real deal, and then we'll try to match that. That looks about right, so we're gonna move on to the nose, and we'll just take one of these spheres and stretch it, I think. And then once I'm happy, I'm just gonna duplicate it, mirror it, and then move on. Ears are next, and I think that should be pretty easy. I see a dome, I think, or a half sphere. Duplicate it, make it a little bit smaller. Make one a hole, align them, and then cut it so that it looks like an ear. There we go. Make it pink, and we'll go ahead and make the body a little more appropriate color. Again, let's check back to see if the scale and position is right. And we're happy, duplicate and mirror it. Now let's move on to the feet. And they're not like normal circular legs, they're kind of boxy. This is another great feature I like to use a lot. It's the radius on the box. So it gives all corners or all edges of the box a radius.
Now to get the toes, I'm gonna use the same shape, but I'm gonna use this trick again of deforming it while it's at an angle so that the slope of the front toe is captured. I'm happy with that, so I'll just make five now, position them, and move on to the nail after that. For the nail, I think I can make it out of this torus. I'll just cut it off at a slope with a cylinder to get the end of the nail, kind of like a talon. And then I'll use a box. And I like that, so I'm just gonna move it around until it looks about right, and then duplicate. And I'll go back and I'm going to look at, again, the position of it and how big it is in proportion with the body. I think I need to make it a little bigger. So then we'll make four, mirror them, and we're done. So here she stands in all her glory, Rachel the Hedgehog. I hope you enjoyed that. So again, if you have any ideas that you want to see made in Tinkercad, leave a comment below or email me.